Hi, this is Gillian for Pro Tools Expert, and we're going to be looking at the nine track types available in Pro Tools and uh, what you might use them for. So here we've got an empty Pro Tools session. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the track menu and open this new tracks dialog. And here we can see a list of those nine track types. I'm going to start with an audio track, create one of those, but I'm also going to create one of these a stereo master fader. That's because you should always have a master fader in your sessions. You just need it for these red lights here. So make sure you're not clipping. And if you are clipping, just turn it down. Everything will be fine. But you want that in every session you make. So here we are, this audio file. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to record enable this. And I'm just going to record my voice onto here. So here I am. Here's my audio file. Here's my audio track with my voice on it. And that's all I've got to say about that. Okay, so I will pop back over here, and uh, if I hit play, onto here. so here I am, here's my audio file. Well, you just heard that, so I won't play all of it, but we have audio recorded onto an audio track. That's the point of them. Is there anything else to be aware of? Well, apart from recording directly onto tracks, you can also import files onto them. You may find something like this. Here I've got a file. I'll just pull this over here. This session's running at 48 kilohertz. This file I've just imported is only 44.1. So you get something like this. Track with my voice on it, and that's all I've got to say about that. And then if we wait... But if I import this, it plays back at the wrong speed. If you get stuff like that, have a look at your sample rates, because that might be what's wrong. Don't think we'll be needing that again. I will get rid of it. So next up, I'm going to just show this. This is the next track type that we've got, an auxiliary input. These are really, really useful. And one thing they're really useful for is for adding effects onto uh, onto tracks and sharing that effect across lots of tracks. So for example here, I've got a reverb. Put my voice onto here. So here I am, here's my audio file. Here's my audio And I can track, put some reverb on voice it. Voice on it, and that's all I've got to say about it. Fantastic, as far as we go. Where should we go next? I think we should talk about MIDI. And uh, very often you may find, if you're in here and you want to use some MIDI, that you eyes are drawn to this MIDI track. Might not be what you need, actually. More likely, what you're after, if you want to use a virtual instrument, is something like this, which is an instrument track. On here, I've got this drum machine instantiated, and uh, over here, I've got some hi-hats. Now, that MIDI track, what's it for? Well, you can use it for a few things. Um, for example, if you're using an external hardware synthesizer, that's a nice way to record the MIDI. But also, if you want to run something like a drum machine or similar, what's called multi timbrely so that you've got different sounds on different tracks, it can make managing what the instrument plays easier. So here, I'm going to bring these two up. And here I've got the kick drum and the snare drum on separate MIDI tracks, but they're rooted to this instrument on this instrument track. Sounds complicated. It's not that bad, actually. But something that you will want to do is to make sure that your MIDI routing is correct. Now, that's shown by default on a MIDI track, but it's kind of tucked away on this instrument section here on the instrument track. So if you can't find that, that's where it is. And here, if I mute these, we've just got the hi-hats. Here's the kick drum back. And here's the snare. So what's the difference between a MIDI track and an instrument track. Well, what it is is that the audio, the bit that you hear rather than just the instructions that play this note now stuff that's in these MIDI MIDI clips, um, is, uh, is all hosted on the one track type with an instrument track. I can illustrate that by if I grab this auxiliary send I was using to send my, my voice to that reverb, if I drop it onto this track, then what we're going to hear is that we'll hear not just the hi-hats, which are on this track that this sends on, but we're also going to hear the kick drum and the snare drum have also got reverb on because these are sending instructions to this instrument on this track, which this sends on. Don't believe me? Here it is. That kick drum and that uh, snare drum have definitely got reverb on. So, moving on. What else can we do? Well, I mentioned folder tracks. They're really important and incredibly handy if you've got lots of tracks that you need to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these three tracks and I'll put them in a folder. So instead of having to deal with three tracks, I can just deal with one. Because these are MIDI tracks, the most appropriate one, if I go move to new folder, I've got a choice of two types, basic folder and routing folder. A basic folder is the one I want for this. And here we can see they've all gone into this 
folder track. You can see this little offset here. And if I click this little folder icon, I can fold or unfold the, uh, the folder. Great. So that makes visual management of what's going on easy. Uh, is there anything else you can do with the basic track? Well, there is. You can, you can edit, do some rudimentary editing. Here we go. I'll just cut this stuff. And we've got my drums, like I said, but we get here. I've made an edit. I've cut some drums. And if we go in here, we'll see that cut I made has happened to all of these as well, which is kind of handy. Okay, I mentioned the routing folder. doesn't really apply in this case, but if I were to create, um, I'll create a routing folder out of uh, these two, perhaps. And uh, if I move these to a new folder, routing folder, then what I'll have is I'll have a folder that also routes the audio from these two tracks through here, and I can also do the stuff that I could do actually on this auxiliary here. It kind of duplicates the function of this, but also creates a folder as well, which is really, really nice. Very powerful feature, these. Okay, uh, other things. Before we get to the video track, which is the last one I want to look at, we'll look at a VCA. Now, what a VCA is, is it's like a, a remote control for the other faders. So to best appreciate that, if we come over into the mix window, and um, I'm going to grab all the tracks that I can, actually. I'll just get all of these. Uh, I'll need those as well. I won't have the master, though. So I'll do all of those, apart from the master. And I'll put them all uh, into a mix group. So group, mix group. OK, I won't even name it. But now they're all in a group together. If I now create that last track type of VCA, and assign it to my one group, then what I end up with is I end up with a remote control fader for all of these. This is really, really useful for controlling big sessions. Lastly, coming back over here, we have the video track. So over here, I have a video track somewhere. There it is. And uh, here I've got a bit of me fiddling around with an iPad, actually. But if I open a video window, and I bring this track online, we'll see that we have some video. And if you're working to picture, you need video tracks to be able to make sure that all of your sounds happen at the same time as the things happen in the picture as well. So there we are. That's a quick tour of the nine track types in Pro Tools and what you can do with them.